what is in fact the best whiskey to mix with Coke according to, we will find out. Whiskey lovers around the world, we asked our tribe of thousands of magnificent bastards. I also have a theory that we're gonna try out in this tasting. Okay. Dane Lohan in our group, he had this idea. He's like, why don't you do a video about the best whiskeys to mix with Coke? Yeah. And I'm thinking, you son of a bitch. <laughs> I love it. You're throwing us to the wolves. I love it. <laughs> I love it because in the whiskey tribe, the number one rule is what? The best whiskey is the whiskey you like and the way you like to drink it. Yeah. So that means uh, you're free to have a personal preference, your own opinion. You just can't shit on other people for their own preferences. Fair enough. Let's do, let's do seven, the top seven. Okay. What do you want to start with? The top seven, the number seven. Number seven. Do you remember what it was? I gotta bring up the list again. I'll bring it up. So okay. we got the number one, <laughs> by far. Rex <laughs> is doing this whole episode just to piss off Daniel. Well, Maybe. That's, that's only 20% of the reason why. <laughs> number seven. Number seven. Wild turkey. Wild Coke. turkey. I'm gonna pour a smaller amount of Coke. Not too surprising. We're not pouring a full glass because we're not gonna drink all of this. The sun is doing weird things. I'm gonna dial that down a little bit. So I'm gonna do about that much Coke. Now you already. And already, ice. Already, Daniel, let me help you. I know you're very inexperienced in the ways of whiskeys and Coke. Uh -huh. You put the Coke in second. No, absolutely you not. You put the Coke in second, you do. No, absolutely you do. not. You do, you're totally wrong. You're totally wrong. Absolutely not. What, you may do that at wrong. a bar, but it's the wrong way to do it. 1,000% wrong. You, want, you know why? You want the whiskey floating on the top. No. In a real whiskey and Coke, no. you want the no. whiskey floating no. on the top. No, no. Because. Have you ever bartended? Mother Now, how much are you putting? I'm putting a, yeah, one ounce. Let's do, all right. One ounce to two ounces. So you're doing makers? Yep. Let's just do them all back to back. Bam, 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 let's do it. So we have wild turkey and Coke, makers and Coke. Number five, this is where we start to get a little interesting. All right. This is a scotch. This is Ardbeg and Coke. All right, it's Jim Beam. And then we got, oh, another interesting. This is Lefroy. Ah, we got two smoky whiskeys in the list. Very peaty, very smoky. Crown and Coke. Crown and Coke. Okay. And the most popular. Hands down. Hands down. By a lot. It actually had actually more than triple the amount of Crown and Coke. Jack and too. Coke is just, you know, it's it's the classic. I mean, so, Jack and Coke could practically be synonymous, synonymous with whiskey and Coke in general. The reason why I want to do these all at once is because I want to compare and see if maybe Jack and Coke is the default. That's why it's the most popular. Maybe there's something better. There it is. It's called Smoky Coke. So Smoky Coke is Daniel's shorthand for the the Freud tin. Yeah. And Coke. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Turkey. Well, turkey. Ooh, yeah. It's honeyed. Yeah. Followed by Makers. Now, the reason why I'm okay with whiskey and Coke is because sometimes you actually just want a Coke. It made the Coke taste like Dr Pepper. Sometimes you just want a Coke. Yeah, sometimes you just want a Coke, but, you all, but summer you're by the pool, But some ice. But whiskey makes everything better. Yeah. So we're gonna improve the Coke. It's not- Woo! That's our begging Coke. It's not making whiskey worse, it's making Coke better. Yeah. And you go. want something cold and, and bubbly and- Oh. Oh. It tastes like wooded, it's Dr. Pepper now, isn't it? <laughs> I would say more Pepsi than Dr. Pepper. It tastes like wooded Coke. And this was the- yeah, it's like a Coke with Ooh. a chunk of oak wood. <laughs> <laughs> this is the Ardbeg. Yeah. You son of a bitch. Yeah, Ardbeg is like this slight it, it wood Dom char, but it no smoke. Dominates the Coke, though. Yeah, it does. It does kick Coke's ass. Moving on to Beam, it makes it almost a kind of slight coconut note in there. Oh, wow. That turned out much different than I was expecting. The Jim Beam? Oh! What is that one? That was after the Jim Beam, you yeah. got Lefroy. That's your smoky coat. Yeah, I think I'm thinking of Ardbeg. Did you switch from Lefroy smoky coat to Ardbeg smoky coat? I think I did. Dude, it's so much richer. What happened? I don't know. Try that. But after having Ardbeg, the Lefroy is just all light and pretty smoke. All right. Yeah, this is a darker smoke. Great. Go back to the Ardbeg. This is a light sparkly. No, I remember smoke. the Ardbeg isn't. It's not fooling around. Now here's the thing though. You, the Lefroy is a little more refreshing. Yes. It's lighter and refreshing if you just want boah, some peatiness. An art pick. That 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 just And that puts us into crown. And it's not a savory meaty peat, it's more of like the woody smoked peat. Oh yeah. No, the crown just makes it maple, maple syrup coke. This is the crown? Mm-hmm. It's coke with a touch of maple syrup. 
It really is. <laughs> well, and finally, the classic. This is the uh, the Jack Daniels and Coke. I do actually appreciate you still get the essence of those individual whis whiskeys you really through, through the Coke. They do change. Yeah, the Coke doesn't just turn everything into a generic whiskey flavor. It really doesn't. You can pick apart, pick out. So my favorite is going to be Ardbeg followed by Laphroaig. And then as far as the bourbons go, my favorite is going to be Maker's Mark. Damn. Maker's Mark did a really good job. Although I do kind of like the coconut that Jim Beam brought to the table. So that was surprising. Yeah, I'm going to go the Jack and Coke here. Most invisible. You say invisible, I say complimentary. I think there's something about the flavor profile of Jack Daniels that just works well with so you're saying it classic tastes like, Coca Cola. Tastes like a drink instead of like two things yes. mixed together. It, I, I, I agree with that. They're going in parallel. It's pretty cohesive. It's, it's friendly and it's nice and it doesn't do anything too surprising. Now, because if you're in like a whiskey and coke mode, let's be honest, you're not going on some wild you're not going for whiskey complexity. journey. <laughs> you're not going exploring here. No, <laughs> you're not. Now you said the. Uh, I think the makers and coke when it comes to bourbons is. My other favorite. So the thing about carbonated drinks is that ice destroys them, <laughs> right? And this is why when you have a fine yeah. cocktail yeah. that's carbonation based, yeah. you usually don't pour it on ice. And what I want to do is our favorite Coke and whiskey, but without the ice, which lets you taste the complexity of both things without watering it down. So I, I'm sorry, I'm, gonna have, I'm just gonna have to go for the Jack Daniels and Coke. So what happens when you try to turn Jack Daniels and Coke into a fancier drink. Let's find out. <laughs> and this is going to be in the same proportions. Now, the, the thing with cocktails and mixing drinks and whatnot, especially in our community, the vast majority of the time people are drinking it neat. Uh, very often in a Glen Cairn glass, it's a very different kind of glass than that. And whenever you're hiding things behind lots of sugar and you're dulling down the alcohol with ice, then it can go past you very quickly mm -hmm. and you can go from zero to drunk without realizing that it's happened. Yeah. All right, what is this? That Jack is and Jack and Coke, but neat, basically. Yeah. It works though, doesn't it? It still works. But see how if the Coke was colder and the whiskey was chilled? If you're gonna do this, you need to have a chilled whiskey, which is, you know, why you don't wanna do a fancy one. But that, that's actually a, almost a cocktail. You all right there? Hey, that's your hat you're hurting. <laughs> So last weekend we had a launch party. Mm-hmm. It's good. It's good. It's a good launch party. People. There's a lot of people. Here. A lot of magnificent people. What are they doing here? <laughs> <laughs> I Did thought you knew. I thought you knew. Ah, shit. <laughs> What was your most memorable moment from last weekend, Saturday, August 25th, the launch of the Crowded Barrel Whiskey Company? 
through the combined power of the Whiskey Tribe. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I had one single moment. I think the most remarkable thing to me right. was how easy it was to hang out with everybody. Yes. That it didn't feel, I mean, while being an introvert, it does make it a little bit tiring, but it didn't feel like a stressor. There were no assholes. Yeah. There were no people causing problems. Mm -hmm. Nothing, everything, it was just, it was a joy. Even the distillers that were here. Well, all of the people down there said that our crowd were gracious, they really wanted to know things, and nobody was impatient. Yeah. And they had a damn good time. And they were doing things like, oh, did you hear what you said about this whiskey? You gotta try this one. And then the YouTubers, the whiskey YouTubers that came. They were great. But what was the most awkward thing that happened during the day? The most awkward thing? Yes, yeah, so while you think about it. So here's the thing, there's, uh, I, I saw the, fil the filmmakers. Um, <laughs> oh, I have something. <laughs> all right, there's these filmmakers, they're running around, they got the drones, they got the cameras, they're getting some cool shots. And uh, I'm talking to one of the Magnificent Bastards, and he comes over to us, he's like, hey, take, take a little step this way, and then just keep talking. And then he runs off in the distance, and he's just filming us, talking to get some B-roll, some just extra footage. <laughs> so, we wrap up the conversation a few minutes later, and I, I hop on the scoot, and I start scooting, I see, oh, he's right there. So I'm scooting by, and I'm like, oh shit, he's filming me. Ah. And he's filming me at the most, like, rough, part of the property where it's like big rocks this big and my tire's like that big. <laughs> so, so he's like nice and tight. he's got the little camera dog just panning around and I'm just <laughs> <laughs> trying to get down the path and he's filming the whole thing. It's like, oh God, why there? Why there? Yeah. I'm trying to look cool for once in my life. All right, what was yours? Mine was, mine was probably when I came into my own bar and my wife and my brother-in-law had figured out such an efficient system that they were uh, trying not to be annoyed that I was there to help. Yeah, it's welcome to my <laughs> life. <laughs> I don't think you fully appreciate the havoc that bubbles can play on a tasty, tasty beverage. Probably not. I'm gonna demonstrate something. What do we have here? We've got uh, Stillhouse Tennessee Whiskey. So let's pour it out to the top of the red label. Oh, look at that, nailed it. We're gonna do a little little, little shake test, a little bubble test. <laughs> this will have bourbon in it. Okay. That will have only Coke. Okay. And we'll see which explodes more. <laughs> I need to demonstrate this I thing. understand that carbonation is minimized by hard liquor in the glass previously. Currently you don't. All right, we got. <laughs> Damn it. Here, I'll shake them. <laughs> <laughs> that's classic. That's classic bartender shake right there. <laughs> <laughs> Your poor camera. Don't aim at the camera. Okay. Open yours. No, I'm gonna see we're what going, yours does first. We're going for height. We're going for height. We're going for height? Yeah. Because we'll see. We're going for explosive power. You ready? Yeah. Ah! Ah! <laughs> that was you know how sticky I'm gonna be? That's much more tame than the other one. Damn it. There you go. You ready? Do you respect the bubbles yet? I've never disrespected them. Never disrespect I... the bubbles. Never disrespect the bubbles! What the hell is that? Ah! <laughs> Which one exploded more, Rex? Son of a bitch! <laughs> Well, Daniel, I guess you're right. I sure learned my lesson. Yeah.